When I first set out on this expedition, I believed that my only companion would be Emerson. But a close examination of the inside cover indicated to me that the journey I was to take would involve some advanced level of companionship. To me, however, the question of the time... From the first lines, we spoke as a group. From the variety of accents and points of emphasis, I soon came to know some of my company. There was E.W., whose clear ringing voice led me to believe that she was to be a natural leader of our force. And there was R.B., whose delicate readings of the quieter passages brought out nuance that neither I nor perhaps even Emerson would have known without. Only a few pages in, it was quite clear that not every member of our company would be with us to the end. P. Dot, lacking the requisite second initial, also evidently lacked the backbone for a trek of such magnitude. He gave up the journey with little more than a sigh. <sighs> Chapter 3. Well, there are times when I must admit that I do harbor doubts about whether the end I make of this conduct of life will be success or failure. I have noted moments of blurred vision, of drifting attention, and from the occasional hiccup in the voices of my companions, I know that I am not alone in these lapses. Wealth is an application of mind to nature, and the art of getting rich consists not in industry, much less in saving, but in a better order, in timeliness, in being in the right spot. The word of ambition... At the fourth chapter, culture, a new voice joined our ranks. This wrinkle gave some of us pause. But the momentum of our company kept us going until E.W., unable to take it any longer, broke with Emerson to say, Who are you? You mean me? Yes, what are you doing here? I wanted to read the chapter on culture. But that's not fair. You need to go back and start at the beginning. We all did. I mean it. I mean, I mean, so miser, if you're going to be like that, to hell with this book. To hell with all of you. Shaken, we resumed. But I could also hear in the voices of my companions that not everyone in our party shared E.W.'s elevated sense of order. I think I'm going to skip ahead. This part is boring. If you do, I must remind you that there are consequences. If I can't skip ahead, I'm going to quit. A main fact in the history of manners is the wonderful expressiveness of the human body. Well into Chapter 5, Behavior, I felt the new life in our company, lighter, but more focused after the recent defections. So strong was our team now, that when we came upon a challenge in Chapter 6, a ripped page, RB and CQ were able to fashion a sling anchored in the binding to provide a clean passage across. In Jerusalem or in California, of same set of records, it appears in a perfect ball. It was of minor consequence that LV, of the faint of voice, decided not to trust this contraption, and turned back. And bears belief as a tree bears apples. In our life. Chapter 7. Considerations by the way. And the day was fine. The crisp air of our collective voice kept us refreshed and invigorated. 
the strong light of Emerson's words carried us aloft. Nature is a rag merchant who works up And then, with the turn of a page, came a horror that none of us expected. Something so foul as to beggar all description. The snot monster. We'll never get past it. How frighteningly grotesque. Just keep your eyes on the words. Do not read between the lines. But it's so disgusting. EW's good advice allowed us past this menace. As long as we stayed focused on the words and looked away from the snot monster, the beast had no power over us. Before long, we had safely made it to the next page. As we made our way through to the penultimate chapter, Concerned with Beauty, I felt that some among our rank were losing their focus. Even R.B., whose gentle voice brought light from the murkiest passages, was beginning to drift. Sorry guys, I'm not going to make it. I'm switching to Whitman. Every natural feature... See sky rainbow. CQ also had to leave us, reluctantly, when her due date came up. I can't afford the fine, but I will come back someday. We never saw her again. The soul of nature, and thereby is beautiful. Life is an ecstasy. Life is sweet as nitrous As the last pages approached, I was not certain that I myself would make it. I questioned why I had ever taken the time to begin this journey in the first place. What could Emerson reveal to me that had not been made clear in other excursions many times before? And when, when by and by, for an instant, the air clears and the cloud lifts a little. The moment the last word was spoken, all the other voices dimmed. And they are alone with them alone. They are alone with them alone. I hesitated for just a moment, and then I closed the cover tight.